Hello and welcome to this video. For those of you who are new to this channel, I'm Dr. Subail Khan. I'm a business strategist, experienced investor, award-winning scientist, and also held the business owners as a coach and sales mentor. In this video, we will look at Viacom CBS, which is trading under the ticker symbol VIAC and evaluate its potential as a long-term value investment. Viacom CBS is a diversified mass media conglomerate and Viacom CBS stock is currently trading at around 43 US dollars per share. Viacom CBS pays a dividend with a current yield of 2.37 and CBS was the most watched network in prime daytime and late night. This multinational focuses on acquiring and distributing films, TV programs and other entertainment content. The overall streaming revenue of Viacom CBS went up 92% from 513 million US dollars in Q2 of 2020 to 983 million US dollars in Q2 of 2021. Their streaming subscription revenue is up a staggering 82% year on year and hiked from 256 million US dollars in Q2 of 2020 to 481 million US dollars in Q2 of 2021, which is an astonishing performance. But this is not all. Their streaming advertising revenue is up a whooping 102% from 248 million US dollars in Q2 of 2020 to 502 million US dollars in Q2 of 2021. Their expertise in management acumen can be gauged from the fact that they lead their industry. This is evident from the fact that not only the quarter's top broadcast series, but also the top three dramas, top six comedies, and also top news magazine were all claimed by them. But this is not all. The company has recently announced a partnership on 18th of August 2021 with Comcast. Now, this partnership will be a game changer for Viacom CBS since they will be launching Sky Showtime. Now, this will be a subscription video on demand service that will be seen in more than 20 European territories having 90 million homes. This service will help it in creating enormous impact in the Europe and the service is expected to launch at the start of 2022. Now, Viacom CBS released their Q2 earnings report at the beginning of August 2021. Now, I have already shared some numbers showing the performance of the company, but now is the time to provide a full overview of the financial performance. And later on, we will have a 5 to 10 minute deep dive to evaluate the feasibility of Viacom CBS as a long term value investment. So first of all, the overview. So let's have a look at the overview of Q2 revenue. Their advertising revenue grew 24% year on year driven by the CBS broadcasts of 2021. Affiliate revenue increased 9% year on year and their streaming revenue rose 92% year on year. And now is the time to dig into the details. So let's have a look at our value investing feasibility software to see if it is a good value investment at the current price which the market is offering us. We will analyze the VIAC stock along the 14 key dimensions which is an exercise that I always do before investing in any stock. So as I already mentioned the uh, Viacom CBS uh, stock is currently trading at 43 US dollars. The current market cap is 26.685 billion US dollars. The PE ratio over the trailing 12 months is 7.9. The peg ratio over the trailing 12 months is 0.6. Now, normally when I invest in a stock, I look for a PE ratio of less than 20. So this is amazing. So it simply means that if the earnings of the share are added year on year, each year for the coming 7.9 years, I will get my money back or it will be equal to the current price of the stock. And the peg ratio of 0.6 shows that the company is growing at a very fast pace. The earnings per share over the trailing 12 months are 3.92 the price to book ratio is 1.3 the price to sales ratio is 1.6 and the price to free cash flow ratio is 11.7 now looking over a time frame of 10 years the average revenue growth was 9% the average asset growth was 10% and the average equity growth was 32% while the average net income growth was 20% which is huge and the average liability growth is 9% and now looking over a time frame of five years, the things look even better. So the average revenue growth is 20%, the asset growth 24%, the average equity growth is 80%, the average income growth is 18%, and average liability growth is 19%. And looking at the last three years, the average revenue growth has dropped a little bit. It is now minus 2%, but that is not a big problem because right now VIAC is engaging in new partnership and it is expanding to new markets. So that is not a big problem. Since the 
company is growing rapidly. The average asset growth is 44%. The average equity growth is 159%. Average net income growth is 6%. And average liability growth is 29%. And looking at the key ratios over here, the most important ones in my opinion are total assets over total liabilities and total current assets over total current liabilities. So I want them to always stay over one or at least most of the times over a certain time frame, they should stay over one, which simply means that the total assets or total current assets are greater than total liabilities and total current liabilities respectively. So over here, we can focus on the blue and the black graph and we can see that it is both of them are staying over one for all the time frame that is of 10 years as we can see over here. So over here, over a shorter time frame of five years, we again see that the total assets over total liabilities graph is again staying over one and same as the case of total current assets over total current liabilities. And also when we zoom into this graph and take the last three years out, the graphs have stayed over one, which shows the financial strength of the company. Now the PE ratio, price to book ratio and price to sales ratio are very important. The most important one for me is the PE ratio. And over here we can see that the stock was pretty much on sale most of the time from 2010 till 2020. There were just two years that is 2013 and 2016 where I've would not buy the stock. Why? Because it is just around my threshold of 20. But apart from that, just look at that. In 2018, the price of the stock was actually very low at some point due to which the PE ratio of 4.72 was reached or else the company made a lot of earnings that year. But now we can see that the PE ratio is steadily increasing. But yet again, as I said, the PE ratio over here in 2020 is just 9.50, which is quite good. And right now, currently, the PE ratio is 7.9, so the stock is absolutely on sale now. As far as the ROE and ROIC are concerned, they actually tell us how efficient a value-centric machine the company actually is. And normally, I want it to be over 20% or 15%, but over here, we can see that most of the time it has stayed well above that threshold. And that was over a time frame of 10 years, of course, even though as we can see that now currently in the past two years, the return on invested capital has dropped below 15%. And that is due to the fact that the company is growing very rapidly. And as I said, the company is now going to penetrate the European market very aggressively. So of course, these investments are going to pay off later on. So you understand nothing is set in stone. Of course, we have these 14 dimensions which act as a disciplined approach to evaluate companies. But then at the same time, we need to have good diagnostic skills also to see what is under the hood and what is actually going on so that we can look at these numbers in the context of the company also what the company is doing is it growing really fast is it developing a lot of new patents so on and so forth so of course for a company like tesla where the numbers might not look very pleasing but the technologies that they are developing which are going into their cars for example the ai algorithms then the internet of things advancements and all the other things that go into their cars are going to create massive value in the automotive sector but of course these technologies will then span multiple industrial ecosystems and industry verticals and due to which i am really bullish on tesla in the long run even though the price has gone quite high right now, but I can definitely wait for the dips and corrections and slowly accumulate. So that what I mean to say is that, of course, these dimensions provide us with a disciplined approach to evaluate companies, but then we have to look at the context also. So we need to have a disciplined approach as well as good diagnostic skills. So both of them go hand in hand. So now let's go back to the stock that we are analyzing currently. So now looking at the gross EBITDA and operating margins, all of them are looking quite good because normally I look for operating margins of over 20 or 15%. And we can see that for most of the time in the last 10 years, they have been staying well above these thresholds. Of course, same is the case for the last five years when we zoom into this graph. And if we zoom into the last three years of this graph, the story remains the same. So the numbers look pretty much spot on. Now let's have a look at the way the stock has actually performed along the 14 key dimensions that I always look into for the time frame of 10 years, then 5 years, and then 3 years. 
So what are those dimensions? First of all, the revenue growth should be at least 15%. Over here it has failed, but we shouldn't worry much about that because over a time frame of five years and three years, it has passed it. So the company is growing. Then the net profit margins must stay over 10%. The ROE and ROIC must be over 15%. One is a pass, one is a fail, but later on we see that the ROIC is less than 15% for the time frame of five years and three years. So all these dimensions are not going to be a pass. So let's keep on looking at all of them. So the peg ratio is under one. That is true. The price to free cash flow ratio is less than 20. The earning per share is at least 10%. And also the equity growth is at least 10%. Both of them are a pass. Is free cash flow growth at least 10% pass? Is the growth of operating income at least 10%? That is a pass. Average share dilution is not over 3%. That is a pass. The current assets are greater than current liabilities. Yes, that is a pass because we saw these graphs, isn't it? The ROE and ROIC are both staying the same or going up. That is a pass. So it is good to see that over a time frame of 10 years, then five years, and then on the right on three years, for all of them, the score has remained over 75%, which is more or less like the ballpark figure that I look for. But once again, as I said, it depends on the company itself. If it is a small startup which has just entered the market i won't expect such numbers of course now let's go to tip ranks and see the current state of the market and what the analysts are thinking about this stock so out of eight analysts ratings two are a hold and six are a buy the hedge fund activity as we can see it has increased by 14.4 million shares in the last quarter which shows that the stock has a high potential for growth the bloggers opinion is bullish the analyst rating is a strong buy so over here on tip ranks, let's have a look at the current dimensions related to the market state so that we can see whether it is the right time to buy the stock, even though the fundamentals and the numbers look very good. So the analyst ratings is a strong buy and it gets a rating of 8 out of 10. The tip ranks investor sentiment is very positive. Then the bloggers opinion is very bullish. The new sentiment is also very bullish and the hedge fund activity is also very important. So we can see that it has increased by 14.4 million shares in the last quarter. And now let's have a look at the similar stocks and see where it stands in comparison to the stocks that are similar. So over here we can see that as far as the price target is concerned, VIAC leads the pack and it is having an upside of 53.16% according to analysts. And as far as the PE ratio is concerned over here, we can see that it is 7.70, which is quite low in comparison to the other stocks. And of course, as far as the analyst consensus is concerned, it is a strong buy. So now after looking at the tip ranks data, we have analyzed all these key points over here related to the market state and all of them are a pass. So it gets a 100% score as far as the current state of the market is concerned, which suggests that it might be the right time to accumulate a little bit at least. So please let me know in the comments below, what do you think about Viacom CBS stock? Do you also believe that it is a good long-term investment do you think that it is the right time to buy also and to accumulate slowly i will be looking forward to your comments down below and thank you very much for your time please let me know in the comments below if you would like to watch such content again and i will see you in the next video bye